And with one final sigh, that's everyone shared with. I had a feeling today would be a bit more stressful than before because of the poems, and I was partially right about that. Sure, Monica and Sayori were easy to deal with, but sharing with Natsuki and Yuri was a little more tense than I would have liked. No worries, though. I'm sure I'll be able to improve. Yuri seemed quite willing to help me with that. Eager, almost. As I'm sitting back, I can see Sayori and Monica having a chat. I think they've just finished sharing. Natsuki and Yuri, on the other hand, seem to be trying to find the right word to say to each other. From where I am, I see Natsuki slide Yuri's poem back over to her in a rather dismissive fashion. I guess you could say it's fancy! Yuri smiles sadly in response. Uh, thanks. She then returns Natsuki's poem back to her. It was just cute. Both responses are rather drab. Hell, they do seem to generalize each other's work a bit. Natsuki stands up, seeming quite irritated by Yuri's comment. Cute? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up! How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. Yuri visibly panics. It's obvious she's not used to being put on the spot like this. Uh, I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Oh yeah? Well, it didn't come out nice at all! Natsuki crosses her arms as she scoffs. A tense moment of silence follows. Monica and Sayori turn around in preparation for whatever may happen next. Yuri breaks the silence as quickly as it had come over... As, it, as, as quickly as it had came over the room. Come over the room would be right. Oh. Oh, I want any text boxes. No. Well, I do have some suggestions. If I wanted suggestions, I'd ask someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Siri liked it, and so did him. So based on that, I'll gladly give you... Some suggestions of my own, first of all. Excuse me. As a sharp contrast to Nazi, Yuri's soft and calculated mannerisms are enough to silence her. I spent a long time refining my writing style, and unless I come across anything new that inspires me, I don't see it changing. Natsuki's face adopts a look of clear irritants. And Halley liked my poem, too. He even told me he was impressed by it. To be honest, I was impressed by both your poems, so that's actually kind of true. The pair fall silent for a brief moment before Natsuki cracks a smug smile like she's cracked the Enigma code or something. I didn't know you were so invested in trying to impress Halley, Yuri! What? Yuri's expression changes to one of the flustered and bewilderment. I look back at Sayori and Monica, who just seem confused by Natsuki's sudden comment. I'm on the same page as them. I turn back to Natsuki and Yuri with a sigh. I guess it's up to me to put a stop to this before it escalates. Listen, girls. The pair of them look at me with expectant, er, expectant eyes. It's true that both your poems impressed me, I can't deny that. But is that any reason to take shots at each other? I give them a brief period of time to think what I just said over before continuing. Like, seriously, you both are able to convey the messages you want to send in how many words you like. It doesn't matter which words you use, your message is still valid. More silence follows. I'm just wondering where the fuck this confidence came from. I look back, feeling unsure of my attempt to disarm the possible argument. Both Siori and Monica are nodding vigorously, Monica herself especially looking fairly surprised. To her credit, she always knew me as the guy that was too nervous to speak up in class. You're right. I I'm terribly sorry for disrupting. Disrespecting your work, Natsuki. Natsuki, however, looks like she still might have some fight left in her. Before she can throw out anything else, Monica steps in, and whilst the look on her face is stern, her voice is soft and calm. Natsuki, Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Natsuki simply looks away from the rest of the group, completely unsure of what to say. Soon enough, though, she turns to face Yuri. Look, Yuri, I'm sorry too. As the pair make up, I go to see Yuri and breathe a sigh of relief. I didn't know you had that in you! Uh, or Siori, of course, seems quite impressed. Seriously, thanks for stepping in there! Monica then sighs and lowers her voice. I can't even match my own club members. Some person that I am, huh? Hey, don't beat yourself up, okay? I think everyone's just a little on edge today. It's only after I finished talking that I realized I'd placed my hand on Monica's shoulder. I quickly retracted. S sorry. No, you're alright! It's only once she says that I spot a faint blush creep its way onto Monica's cheeks. Okay, everyone, it's time to wrap up for today. Once again, Monica's voice fills the room, her confidence is her, her in herself seemingly returning. How did everyone feel about sharing poems? Well, I think it went great. It went better than I thought it would. It went okay. Well, mostly. Natsuki flashes Yuri an awkward glance. Yuri doesn't seem to notice it, though. Monica then turns her attention to me. How about you, Hallie? I'd say it went pretty well. Monica smiles optimistically. In that case, how about we do the same for tomorrow? The remaining four of us agree in unison. 
To be fair, I doubt I'd get better at this if we just dropped it after one day. Besides, I'm not going to turn down a way to express myself creatively. <laughs> after some more conversation about today, we all start up or start to pack up. It isn't too long until Siori and I wave goodbye and depart from the club. Unlike most of our walks home, Siori is fairly quiet for the most part of it. However, it's clear that it's not because something's bothering her. Rather, it seems like she's thinking hard about something. I swear the inner machinations of her mind could be one of life's greatest mysteries. You almost might say like an enigma. To think that I once thought there wasn't more to her than unfiltered happiness. Oh, how naive I was. Hey, Ollie. Siri speaks after what feels like forever, although realistically it must have only been a couple of minutes at most. Mind if I ask you something interesting? I don't even know if that's the right word to use. Yeah, sure. I stop on the pavement and turn on my heel to face Sayori. A moment passes as she ponders how to word whatever she wants to ask me. So, how do you think Monica feels about you? What? Out of whatever I was expecting, expecting her to ask, that certainly wasn't it. Hell, it's kind of surprising that she was so forward with it. Normally, she'd just verbally dance around the actual question. Well, where on earth did that come from? I shouldn't say much, but, but she did kind of ask me about you this morning. Plus, it's pretty obvious you're into her, Allie. Surely not, right? I remain silent, pondering on how to respond. Just gotta play it cool, Allie. Yes, you are, aren't you? There's no way I can lie to her at this point, is there? Then again, why would I need or want to do so? She's my best friend. If I can trust anyone with my secret, it'd definitely be her. I am, yeah. I have been for a while. That's the first time I've admitted my crush to anybody else. In a way, I'm thankful that the first person I tell is Sayori. But at the same time, I'm nervous as to what her reaction will be. Sayori hasn't yet said anything in response, opting instead to motion for me to continue talking. Might as well let this all out. I gulp. I think it started when second year started. Even though we only had one class together, we got on really well. Like, you remember how I was still quite nervous to talk to anyone but, but you for the longest time? Siri nods, listening intently, as if to ensure she doesn't miss a word. Well, Monica started to talking, er, started to talking to me first, and I didn't feel like I had to hide myself. I could be myself around her, and she never once judged me for it. I fall silent. My brain is screaming at me to stop, but I don't care. I need to get this out. I can do this. Just being around her made class that bit more bearable. Like, I don't think- or don't know if she chose to be around me or what, it just felt nice. But I knew I'd never have a shot in hell with her, especially after- After Yuki, you're right. Yeah. Ah yes, Yuki Sakamoto, the girl who broke my heart and left the biggest dent in my confidence. She'd been dared to go out with the weird kid that- or, yeah, that being me. When I'd later found that she'd been cheating on me and confronted her about it, she just laughed. I still remember what she said. Why would anyone love you? Thankfully, she's been long gone for a while now. Still doesn't change what she did. Hallie, I promise you, Monica's not like that at all. What? I don't. What did I say? What if she. She's not, Hallie! There's people out there that would love you! You trust me, right? Of course I do, Sayo. My voice trails off. Monica's really sweet. You have my word on that. And from what I can tell, she seems really comfortable around you. Not to mention it's quiet, e or quiet easy to fluster. Yeah, Natsuki proves that to be true for both of us. <laughs> I get the strange feeling that I'm never going to live that down. After a bit more walking, talking, and a lengthy hug from Sayori, we eventually make it back to the familiar view of our street. Hey, we're going out for dinner tonight. You wanna come too? Sayori's parents have always treated me like one of their own. Then again, our parents get along quite well too. I'd love to, but I... Oh, I didn't mean to skip that so quickly. Oh, sorry. It wasn't even on a Wendy tax box. I did it to myself. I'd love to, but I gotta get this media studies essay finished. There. If I don't, Honda's gonna go nuclear on my ass. Sometimes I wonder why I ever chose that class type to begin with. Not, or note to past me. Media studies may sound cool, but maybe with another teacher. It's okay, there's always next time. True. Anyway, better not hold you up any longer. Have a good evening, Sayo. You too. Just before Sayori gets back inside, I turn around and call out to her. Hey, Sayori. Huh? Uh, about what I told you. Could we keep it between us? Of course we can. Your secret is safe with me. 
and with that I return home. I shut the door behind me and rest my back against it. If I ever needed any confirmation as to why I stayed friends with Sayori, today was it. Sure, I joke about her being an airhead sometimes, but she can be truly sincere when the situation calls for it. I can't tell if she only knows the right things to say because we've known each other for so long, or if she's just naturally good with people. But thanks to her, it's like a massive weight's been lifted off my chest. Now it's just building up the confidence to ask Mon- Baby steps, Sally, baby steps. After realizing that I can't work on my assignment on an empty stomach, I head to the kitchen. I quickly make up a sandwich, grab some other assorted snacks, and an energy drink. Is it the healthiest strategy in the world? Fuck no, but it's not failed me once. I sit myself down at my desk and get started. Shouldn't take too long, should it? Two hours later. I have no fucking idea what to write. I open my eyes slowly. I look back at my laptop screen, which is currently the only light in this room. I've reached the word count already. Fuck it. I quickly render it and submit it on the online portal. At least it's done now. Whether it's good or not doesn't even bother me. It's just done. I glance down at the screen's digital clock. 7.02 p.m. Internally cursing myself, I try rush to get something down for tomorrow's poem. But nothing comes to mind. I'll just spend my lunch break on the roof tomorrow. That way I should be able to get something down. Just as I'm getting changed for bed, my, son, my phone goes off. I don't even check who it is as I answer. Chances are it's Sayori. Even then, she normally doesn't call this late. This is 7 o'clock is late. Hello? Uh, hey, Hallie, it's me, said a mystery voice. I didn't, er, I'd recognize that voice anywhere. Then why was it question marks? Ryuji? Oh, right, this guy. Dude, it's just gone 7. I know, I just got back in. Date with Kaho? You know it. According to Ryuji, he and Kaho had been together since mid-junior high. How they've stayed together this long is truly mind-boggling. Jeez, man, you two are going to be married in no time. Bloody hope so. How about you? How have you been? Well, you know me. Same old shit. I was able to get a massive weight off my chest, though. You finally asked Sayori out? No. Dude, she's like a sister to me. I feel my face redden profusely. I know. I'm only kidding. There's a moment of silence between us. That just isn't why you called me, though, is it? Nah, I was just wondering if you want to do some deathmatch real quick. I contemplate telling him I gotta get some sleep. But with Honda's assignment done, I guess I could blow off some steam. Doom or Quake? Quake! House of Thon? There's a quad damage with your name on it! The digital sounds of rocket launchers, virtual giblets flying, and mine and Ryuji's competitive banter dominate the next few hours. It isn't my alarm that wakes me up this morning, but instead my ringtone. Groggily, I pick my phone up. It's Sayori? She's not usually up this early. I yawn as I answer the call. What's up? Yes, yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be in school. With the way she sounds, it's clear she's unwell. Let me guess, food poisoning? Mm-hmm. Eh. eh. And undercooked chip. She's cut off by her own coughs. After some silence, I speak up. You should get some rest, Sayori. Uh, I know. Sayori yawns. Also, promise me you'll never eat a bear or Pearl City. I don't want you to get ill, too. Noted. Though I chuckle at how serious she sounded, I'll be subconsciously avoiding there. Never really heard any positive things about that place, anyway. Once I force myself out of bed, I make my way to the bathroom to get a quick wash. I let the water run for a bit before stepping in. God, warm water feels nice in the morning. After a quick breakfast, I make my way outside. Since I'm not with Sayori today, I decide to get my earphones to keep myself occupied. I just shuffle my playlist and start the lonely walk there. I can kind of see why Sayori always likes walking alone. Or like walking together. Why Sayori always? Well, like, it's gotta be likes or liked. It can't just be like, man. Doing it alone sucks. Oh, well, at least I've got my music. At long last, the bell rings for lunch and I'm the first one out. However, I divert from my usual route and head to the roof. 
I told myself I'd write my poem up there, and I intend to keep to my word. Once I make sure I'm alone, I dash upstairs onto the rooftop. As I'm heading up, I receive a text from Sayori, basically saying she'd told the rest of the club about her absence. I'm at least thankful they won't have to ask me where she is. But still, maybe if she was here, she'd help me understand my feelings a bit better. Both about this poem as well as Monica. I, whine, er, I wince as the sun temporarily blinds me, but I recover quickly. I thought I was whining at the sun. I make my way to a nearby bench. It's kind of funny, though. There's benches up here. Here. My god, I cannot do it. Here, and barely anyone ever comes up here aside from janitors. The silence is serene. I plug my earphones in and let the music from this morning continue as I start to write. The song that starts playing softly into my eardrums gives me this inspiration I need as I gaze past the wire fence and past the midday Sapporo gun line. S -s -s I don't know. Horizon! I mumble out loud to myself. A short poem will do. I don't need too many words. Both the music and my heart guide my pen as I try to paint a picture of a feather drifting across the midsummer sky. Try to paint a picture. Of a song playing across the airwaves. An almost empty plane flying over the coming horizon of the night. Of words only ever spoken on an empty solitary rooftop. Monica, I faintly speak. My heart started to race. I put my poem in my bag as I finished it now. I pop my earphones out and place my hand on my chest. I breathe in. I breathe out. After a few repeats of this, I hear the door open. I look back only to retreat my eyes just as quickly. Of course Monica shows up. I was hoping something before you walked up and said hello. I really hope she didn't. Holly. My brain really needs to stop doing that. I turn to face her. Uh oh, hey Monica. She gives me one of her signature smiles. Didn't think I'd see you up here. She starts walking over to me. I return the smile. Could say the same to you. But what are you doing here anyway? Oh, I just needed some air. Monica seems to get a little bit nervous, as if there's more than she's letting on. I know it can... Or, I know. It can get stuffy in there. How about you? She takes a seat next to me on the bench. Please don't show her this is kind of awkward for you. Um, I'd say I needed the air and somewhere to think. Oh, to think about what? Monica seems curious. If I can be honest with Sayori about my hidden feelings for Monica, then I can surely be honest about as to why I'm up here. I came up here because I needed somewhere quiet to write my poem. I was so exhausted last night. It's only after I say it out loud that I realize that I'm admitting to the club president that I rushed my assignment. Rather than scolding me like my brain told me she would, she smiles. You say that like I'd be mad at you. I couldn't do that. But what? My eyes dart back and forth between Monica and the concrete floor. Hallie! Monica gets a little bit closer, but not too close for comfort. I know, but it's really stressful this time of year. Like with finals, so many assignments, just all of it. If you couldn't finish it, I'd be per I'd perfectly understand. I go silent as I take in what Monica said. I'd forgotten how understanding she was sometimes. I unzip my bag and, after a bit of doubt, I pull out my poem. Horizon. Alone. There I stand in the center of this concrete jungle. It's dark, and in spite of the glowing streetlights, I seem to be the only one around. Walking around aimlessly only gets me so far, but I soon spot a light, a beacon seeming so far. Yet it glistens against its surroundings and burning bright. The closer I get, the sound of a voice greets my ears. It calls my name. It's a voice I recognize. I slowly start to be blinded by the light. Straining my eyelids shut, a heart or a hand takes hold of mine, squeezing it tightly. It pulls me in, pulling me closer. I soon open my eyes, opening myself to both the future and to the face at the end of the horizon. It's a bit longer than I planned, but at least it's still legible. But is it any good, though? With a worried sigh, I go to hand the poem to Monica. Y you can read it, if you'd like. Are you sure you don't want to wait until club? I shake my head. We can discuss it then, I just... I stop myself short. Why is it so hard to ask Monica to read it outside of club? I just want you to read it. Monica timidly takes the poem and starts to read it. Rather than watch for any visible reaction, I simply gaze out to the cityscape. But before long, the silent spell is broken by the bell. I look back at Monica, and our eyes meet up for a moment. She goes to hand me back my poem, but I gently, or gently I push her hands back a bit. No, just keep it until we share it, club. She doesn't say anything to hint to any uncertainty, and her eyes show a glimpse of understanding before we head back down to the depths of the school. Yeah, oh, boy. All right, so hold on. There's, there's more to this session that we're going to do in a little bit. 
just going to take a moment because I'm feeling a bit out of it. And I'm going to take a little rest before I record more. We'll be back. It's not the end of the session. See you later.